Praise God. We thank the Lord for what he's doing. We want to welcome those who are watching by Facebook tonight. God bless you. Hope you had a nice holiday. Merry Christmas. We can say Merry Christmas now. Amen. So many things are happening in the world at a very rapid pace. And we want to continue on the one world order. What is happening behind the scenes that you're not sure and that you may not even know? There are programs out there that are subliminally programming your minds. You don't even know it unless you have discernment. This New Age movement has been around for many, many years. But they're actually Luciferian organizations. They are worshipers of the devil. And their one goal is to bring it about in different forms. One of the forms that they bring it out in is by destroying all controlling governments and religions. And they're actually communism, which is actually witchcraft. Communists are just another pawn for much larger circle of bidden, uh, instigators that want to provoke these things. And tell me if you're not seeing these things today. Revolution, riots, race wars, and anarchy. And we're seeing that today in also riots as a way to frighten the inhabitants into a one world government. To get people to be afraid so that the government will step in and say, we'll protect you, and they'll say yes. I believe it was about a year ago I shared a video and before I get into that video tonight, I've got several I'm going to share that are kind of short. How Christians are being duped, how Christians are being seduced. The Bible says that many will fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. They're, sed they're seductive. They seduce you. And it's not from a sexual point only. But it's a seducing of getting you away from Christ getting you away from uh, the solid teachings of God's word, getting you away from commitment to Christ. These seducing spirits are well, be, uh, well implemented in our world today. One of the ways that's happened is through a man by John MacArthur. I don't know if you've heard of him. I think you probably heard of him. He's got grace to you. Uh, television program. I think, I don't know if it's TV around here, but uh, his ministry is grace to you. And several months ago, maybe a couple of years ago, time goes by so quickly, he made a statement along with Dr. Jimmy DeYoung. And I want to play that video for you. It's really audio, but there's a couple of slides, maybe a little blurry because of the uh, download speed that it came. But I want you to realize something, that there is an underlying and it's coming through a lot of the denominations, even the fundamentalists, even the evangelicals, even the charismatics, and even some Pentecostals. It is slowly taking away the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now, my, my message on Sunday, and if you haven't heard it, go to the website, get the message, listen to it. How that there's undertonings of things that are happening, not only in the world, but as I said, also in the church. But I want you to see the subtlety of it. Now, since this video, there have been uh, some of his um, 
protect us, if you will, that came out and said, oh, he didn't mean that. You took it all wrong. I've listened to it over and over again. There's no way you can take it wrong. What he said is what he said. So I want to play that first video from John MacArthur, and you listen to this very carefully. Story to tell. Yeah, absolutely. Top of it. Uh, I've got a surprise for you today. Okay. Do you remember when you talked about the uh, – someone asked uh, about the mark of the beast and whether or not someone could receive the mark of the beast and then become a believer? You remember that? Uh-huh. Do you remember the controversy that stirred up? Yes. It was quite a bit, wasn't it? It was. I got a lot of emails, people saying, I can't believe he would say such a thing. You remember all that? Yes, sir, I do. All right. Well, I was walking April the other night listening to a Q&A uh, from a few years ago. Uh, where Pete, John MacArthur on a Wednesday night lets, ha, would have the folks in his congregation stand up and go to the microphone and shoot questions at him. Would you like to hear the question he was asked and his answer? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. In regard to the latter half of the tribulation period, when, when men would be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell, my question is, uh, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes, uh, I think, you know, in the seven-year tribulation coming in the future, we're going to get into this so probably a week from Sunday night, maybe this Sunday night, maybe a week, I'm not sure. But um, the tribulation is a seven-year period, right? The rapture of the church, seven-year tribulation, then Christ returns, sets up his kingdom. Now, in that seven-year period, really two things happen. God begins to judge the world in, with a series of holocausts, and at the same time, he begins to redeem his people, Israel. And in the process of this, the Antichrist establishes his rule, and in order to function in the economy of the Antichrist, you have to take the mark of the beast. Uh, the mark being the number of a man, Revelation 13, 666. Six is the number of man, right? Seven is the number of perfection, and man always falls short of perfection. 666, six, six, six. always six is never seven. So the number of a man. And apparently what's going to happen, you take the mark on your hand or on your forehead. And we've talked a lot about that, you know, that, uh, that that's kind of the computer situation. We're now moving fast toward the time when we're going to have to do everything we do by cards and by numbers and all of that. And uh, uh, those numbers, the thing about a card that's a problem is you lose it, and they've already devised systems to put the number on your hand and on your forehead, and you go through a scanner, and, you know, that's how you buy and sell. It's automatically deducted from your bank account. Now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period, and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, Will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes. Otherwise, there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation. Yeah. And you've got to have the salvation of folks in the end of the tribulation. You're going to have the Jews redeemed. You're going to have, according to Revelation chapter 7, an innumerable number of Gentiles redeemed. So many, they can't even be counted across the face of the earth. So I don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to, it, to permanency any more than you being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life. Well, especially when the 144,000 don't start their ministry till the second half. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That make it a little tough. Yeah. Well, there you go, Dr. DeYoung. <laughs> well, we're looking at the same book. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what's so interesting, and that's what we were saying. I mean, you know, that's not the impartable sin. You've got to be... I, I, the thought, I, I've never thought that what he said there was very interesting. The fact is, if nobody gets saved in the last three and a half years because they have received that mark, where's that uh, unbelievable number of Jews that come to know Christ and that are living that actually go into the millennial kingdom in natural bodies? That's good that uh, Brother John is looking at the same book that I am, and we came up with the same answers. Well, it is, and that was very interesting because you remember that was really, really controversial. I don't, I'm not so sure you've ever made a statement on our program before that was as controversial as that one. And I got so many emails on it, and uh, and then I was walking the dog the other night listening to this Q and A, and I thought, oh, I've got to play this on the air. This this will be a great surprise for Dr. D. Young. So there well, you go. it is a pleasant surprise, and. Uh, the dear brothers and sisters who disagreed, you know, I don't quite know where they were coming from. I, I don't need to know that. But just uh, now, with uh, that confirmation from another uh, Bible teacher, and he's a great Bible teacher. I'm just a beginner. but uh, No, the, I wouldn't the, say that, but go but, on. <laughs> uh, it's great to see that and the confirmation of both of us believing that same thing. I wonder how many more emails you're going to get now. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. You got two guys on your side that are pretty good, right? <laughs> I think so, too. I think so, too. Yeah. I do.
Well, we uh, both love you and love what you're doing and have the opportunity to interact on your program. Well, the feeling's mutual. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Some of the words he uses, I think, it's not about his thinking. It's about proper biblical exegesis. Now, in Revelation, it says that those that take the mark of the beast and worship his name and his number shall be in torment forever and ever. That doesn't sound like there's redemption in that to me. The question about, well, then who's going to be saved? Well, the Bible says there are going to be those who will not receive the mark of the beast, will not worship the image, and they're going to be killed. So there are going to be people that refuse to take that mark. Right? They're going to be beheaded. So I don't know where he gets his theology from. I know it's not getting it from the Bible. But I want you to understand how the, the enemy is taking this and lulling people, because I understand his Baptist theology, once saved, always saved. He believes that. Once you say the sinner's prayer and you're saved, that's it. You're stamped for life, you're saved. There's no way you cannot be saved. So I can understand his theology from that point of view. But it's not true. Because there are going to be those people that are going to get saved during that time, there are going to be people that you probably witnessed to that didn't accept Christ that's going to go through and they're going to remember what you said, that one day I'm going to be in the rapture and all these Christians are going to be gone. How are they going to explain that? And they're going to remember that and they're going to say, I'm not taking no mark on my forehand. I, I've heard un, unsaved people say, I'm not taking no mark because I know what the Bible said. They're unsaved people. Now, whether they will or not during that time because you won't be able to buy or sell, and I told you this, if you don't make the rapture and you stay behind, you're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to eat. You're not going to be able to have water. You're not going to be. So all of those things, you won't be able to get your SS check, your, DS, your, your Social Security check. You're not going to get your disability check. You're not going to get paid at work. Everything's going to be on this system. I personally believe the church is going to be raptured before that happens. I'm a pre-tribulation Believer in the rapture, I believe it's scriptural. I don't believe the other, the other two or three different uh, views are scriptural. I think they're taken out of context, and they spiritualize all scripture. They, they actually use what we call the, um, the um, allegorical method of interpretation. They allegorize everything. They don't take it for the grammatical, historical interpretation that it is. So anyway, so that's the first thing. Remember um, last week when I was teaching... And I, we went to Romans, and I, I showed you how they're going to use the Bible to justify submitting to the government. Remember me saying that? I came across a video today, and if you believe me, I'm your pastor. I'm not going to lie to you. I did not see this video last week. I saw it today. So I took a little clip of what this guy was saying to, to, to just kind of bring a confirmation. So play that second one for me, please. It's a short one, very short succeed that they have recruited priests, rabbis, and clerics from various religions to quote appropriate scriptures about obeying government. They are being trained to tell people not to fight back and that their best hope is to pray. Did you hear them? They're training clergy, clerics, priests to tell the people to obey the scriptures and submit to authority. I told you that last week. I saw this today. I said, I got to put that up there so they won't think I'm a nut. You know, and they'll believe me what I'm telling you, that that was of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, there are priests, there are, uh, I showed you the video Sunday of what's taking place in the Catholic Church with the Pope, with some of the Christian charismatic leaders, and how they said there's no more Protestantism anymore. We're all Catholics. And how they're all coming under that one world um, religion in, this, in, the, in the guise of unity. Okay? In the guise of unity. 
Now, something else very interesting that's happening uh, as we look at these things to make you aware of what's going on. Now, some of you may know this. Some of you may not even know this. How many know about the federal ID? Anybody know about the federal ID? Huh? Yeah, it's more than a license, but it's coming. It, 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 every person has to have a federal ID by 2020. Okay, play that next video for me. Lisa Haven here. While Americans are going to be and already are forced to comply by October 1st, 2020. If you do not comply, well, that means no entry for you. And the bills and legislation were passed in 2005. What am I talking about? Well, many of you probably already heard about this, but I want to bring it back up because I think it's a very critical point that we are at in our society today. I am talking about the real ID. Now, if you've gone to the DMV lately, you may have gotten a notice or some kind of new requirement stating that you cannot fly, nor can you, well, enter any federal buildings if you don't comply with the new federal national ID called a real ID. For those of you who may not know what the real ID is, I'm gonna throw up the resolution here on the screen, but this was passed again in 2005 and it's called the Real ID Act, House Resolution 1268. And it's titled Improved Security for Driver's License and Personal ID Cards. Now this requires you, when you go into the DMVs to submit your name, your phone number, your address, stuff that you would submit for a driver's license. However, it takes it a step further and it asks for proof of residency, your birth certificate and your social security card. Additionally, this will include facial recognition technology. It reads, subject each person applying for a driver's license or ID card to mandatory facial image capture. What does that mean? Well, that means that they have your face on record in a federal national database. It means when you go to the airport, you can have an ID with your face on it. And in addition to that, they'll have your face on their screen. That is what facial ID recognition technology is. They have your face scan and now they have the ability to find you in a crowd. That is the purpose of the real ID to get all your information on a federalized, nationalized uh, database. And this is what the government has done. When must we all comply? Well, as I stated in the beginning of video, and as you can see in the document, we must all comply by October 1st, 2020. That means you have your real ID in your hand with a little star logo up in the corner of your ID there, showing that you are real ID and federally, nationally recognized, and you're compliant as well. Now, how are the states holding up to this? Well, check out this map. This map shows 90 8% of the states here in America are ID compliant or have at least filed for an extension to be ID compliant. Green means that they're already compliant. Yellow means that they've actually filed for that extension. Now, this is all part of the United Nations agenda. This is why they're implementing this thing, because according to Article 16.9, everyone in the world needs to have an identification card by 2030, as you can see there. Well, this national ID no longer uh, is it controlled by the states as we have with our driver's license, but now you become a national federalized agent, federalized person with all your personal data given to the feds. Now, what if you don't comply? What if you say, I don't want your real ID. I'm just going to keep my driver's license. Well, obviously that's an option as well, but you will not be able to fly domestically, nor will you be able to enter any federal buildings. You can't do any of that unless you have a real ID and you cannot fly unless you have a passport or a real ID. In other words, it's a forced compliance on the American people. And fact of the matter is they're really pushing for it. Check out this report here from news10.com put out July 2018. DMV encouraging New Yorkers to get the real ID. K5 News, July 2018. Washington driver's license change to comply with real ID. 
Daily Press, June 2018, Virginia DMV introduces new Real ID credentials. The Chronicle, July 2018, Ohio requires new ID by 2020. Golden State Newspaper, June 2018, all California driver's license must upgrade to the new Real ID. Doesn't this kind of remind you of something? You see your papers? I don't think I have them on me. In that case, we'll have to ask you to come along. Wait, it's possible that I... Uh, yes. Here we are. These papers expired three weeks ago. You'll have to come along. Halt! Halt! Papers, please. Let me see your papers. You know, here's what I find interesting about the real ID, that the entire purpose that they pushed this in the first place was around September 11. They said, we didn't want more terrorists and we wanted to better weed out terrorists from our country. So let's get a nationalized database, because let's be frank, that's what it is, and make every American comply with their social security numbers, face recognition technology, so we can get that. But here's the thing that they don't say is if you want to vote, you don't need a real ID. Kind of a catch 22, right? Because if you were trying to get away from voter fraud and it really had anything to do with September 11th and well, our voting system, then wouldn't they make voting part of real ID compliant? No, you can still vote having your typical way of voting. You don't even have to support or have your real ID. The real motive here then shows me that it's 100% control. What's next? Checkpoints? The government's now putting a national ID card together and they want checkpoints. We will be carrying our papers and they have recommended there'll be checkpoints uh, throughout the country. Isn't that what Nazi Germany did that everybody in America was against? Checkpoints, proof, papers please. May I see your papers? It seems that checkpoints just might be step two in this entire process. But what do you need in order to have that checkpoint? Well, you need a more federalized police force. But that's not something they've ever talked about, right? <laughs> Check out this report. It goes all the way back to 2015. The first one's here, USA Today. Reynolds wants a lawless police force. Federalize it. WND News 2016, Obama's federalization of police grows nationwide. Real news right now, Trump announces plan to federalize American police department. Now, I love Trump to death. I may not agree with everything in this particular one. I just don't agree with. Here we have a federalized national ID system you're forced to comply with by 2020, or you can forget about flying and going into, well, public places like your federal departments there. And now they're even talking about a federalized police force. This is removing so much power from the states and giving it over to federal. There has to be an equal amount of power in both branches. You can't give everything over to the feds because then absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. I'm a huge supporter. I believe we need government. We do. Absolutely. I don't believe in really big government, but I believe in equal forms of power to the state and to the federal. But this is just simply not going to happen when you federalize everything. Well, I'd love to get your thoughts and concerns on this. Please leave them below. And don't forget to check out my partner at getthetea.com. He literally has... Okay. When Trump wants to federalize, and I believe this is the reason why the police department, and I think in that aspect it's a good idea, but it's also a bad idea, is that if they make the police departments across America and they federalize it, that means if you shoot and, if you shoot and kill a police officer, you have the automatic death penalty. If you kill a federal agent, you get, you get the death penalty. Now today, they, they negotiate and they, in some states they don't have the death penalty anymore. So I think that's where he's coming from, the angle that President Trump is coming from is to federalize it so that if you do kill a police officer, it's an automatic death penalty if you're convicted. So that's something that's going on that uh, you probably didn't know back in 2015. These things are coming out. In 2020, you're going to have that registered, uh, uh, registered card to be registered with the federal government. Now, you can't travel without that, but if you have a passport, you will be able to travel. Now, here's something interesting. We just came back from vacation, but when we were on our way on vacation, we were in Boston and we were taking a 
JetBlue flight. And we got to the uh, part where they started to board, and we were actually almost first in line. And when we got there, she said, stop right there. And we stopped, and they had a camera with a, with a monitor. And it actually showed our picture. And it matches your picture. You have to look in the camera, and it matches with the picture that they have of you from your passport. And that's your boarding pass from now on. And you board that way. So if your face doesn't, doesn't come in recognition with the documentation, you can't get on the plane. Okay? So that's already Im being implemented already. All right, this next uh, video I want to share with you because it's, it has to do with the Antichrist spirit is to segregate and to isolate you from society. What's one of the ways that the enemy is using to get us to be isolated? What is everybody walking around doing? Couples are out to dinner. They're no longer talking. What are they doing? Come on. Okay. People don't go anywhere without this anymore. Okay. Social media. Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. Let me ask you a question. How much time do you spend on Facebook a day? The average, they said the average person spends at least 55 minutes, not all at one time, but a, you know, if you add up all the time they spend on Facebook, it's 55 minutes. And then I ask you the same question, how much time did you spend reading your Bible? How much time do you spend on the internet versus how much time do you spend in the Bible? And you'll see it's like this. More time on the internet, more time on social media, less time in the Bible. You have all of the social media actually uh, policing what you say so that you, they can be politically correct. They're Algorithms are actually keeping you from really s saying things and letting it reach people, all people. They'll, they'll, they'll cut you off, and they'll just let a certain amount of people that you associate with get you. You ever get that sometimes? Sometimes you say, how come I don't get their news feed? How come I don't get this? How come I don't get that? I've got it before. Why am I getting it now? It's because after monitoring you and seeing wh what you like and what you do and how, how you speak, and if your political correctness or not, they'll... they'll Control your speech. I want you to watch this video and see what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Lisa Haven here, and I've got a huge report. This one about Facebook and how they are programming you. Now, you're probably thinking, another report on Facebook? But hear me out, because in this video, I'm going to prove to everyone exactly what they're doing to you. Not only are they brainwashing you and programming you, but they're gathering out all your data. And you might say, I know this already. But if you listen to this video in its entirety, you might learn something that you never heard before. Some of it you may have, some of it you may not have. But this video needs to go viral and expose the corruption before it's too late. Well, let's start with Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and creator of Facebook. Well, for starters, we know that he created, a, a, also uh, was a creator of a prank website, if you even want to call it that, called Face Smash. Now, I've reported on this, so I'm not going to get back into the detail, but you can solve it with a simple Google search. But Face Smash was a site intended to pit one woman against another and say who is prettier and who is uglier. Well, this is who we're dealing with on Facebook. That's not all. Let's also flash back to the fact that he called his users dumb effers. Check out this report on Esquire.com, and it's titled Mark... Zuckerberg called people who handed over their data dumb efforts. Want to know how the conversation came about? Well, according to Business Insider, here's how the conversation went. Zuckerberg, yeah, so if you ever need information about anyone at Harvard, just ask. I have over 4,000 emails, pictures, addresses, SNS. 
Redacted friend's name said, what? How did you manage to get all that information? People just submit it. I don't know why. They trust me, dumb Fs. That's the exact dialogue. Well, what about Mr. Zuckerberg's hoodie? You know, he always wears a hoodie on his back. Some of you may have heard this, some of you may have not. Well, what's in this hoodie? Well, at the D8 conference, it's an all things digital conference, a conference that focuses on technology, advancements in technology. Uh, it specializes in startup news companies. Well, as you can see on the screen, Mark Zuckerberg revealed his jacket at that conference and inside of it, there's all kinds of cryptic letters, numerology and symbolization, a, a jacket full of strange symbolism. And he says it represents the company's motto about being open and being connected. Hmm. A little strange if you ask me, uh, a little cryptic if you also ask me. Well, fast forward a few years. What about the D9 conference that happened after the one that Mark Zuckerberg attended and revealed his jacket? Well, at the D9 conference, they revealed a, a goodie bag. Check out this report from CNET.com titled Unboxing the D9, D9 Conference Swag Bag. This is an all things digital conference, but there was a hoodie that was placed into an overstuffed duffel bag. You're, the picture you're seeing on the screen is what was inside of the hoodie that was placed in this duffel bag at the D9 conference, conference, which Mark Zuckerberg had attended before. But inside the bag, it had gizmos and gadgets and the logo that you see, a pentagram with the Illuminati pyramid at the top. You can see the all-seeing eye has a smartphone over the eyeball of the person, which symbolizes mass control over population using a smartphone, right? Just like seen on that picture, Illuminati symbolism, satanic symbolism inside of a D9 conference, something that Mark Zuckerberg himself was involved in. Interesting? Well, it gets even weirder. Let's go to another flashback. Remember Regina Duncan? You know, the woman who in the past promoted the idea of getting a tattoo on her arm? Like the image of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, everybody knows that's a negative thing. And here she is showing everybody the technology that she's embedded into her arm. And she goes on to say that it's a great thing to be used to authenticate people. <laughs> Interesting. Well, she's the same woman who years after that started working for Facebook. She worked for Facebook for a time. Well, here's what she had to say uh, about one of the goals that she was hoping Facebook would acquire and was working on. Actually, Facebook is working on. Take a listen. So what if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. And it's just the kind of fluid human computer interface needed for AR. Think of it more like this. You take many photos, you choose to share some of them. Similarly, you have many thoughts. You choose to share some of them. We're talking about decoding those words, the ones you've already decided to share by sending them to the speech center of your brain. Better yet, with the ability to text a friend without taking out your phone, or to send a quick email without missing the party. Interesting. Facebook attempting not only to gather your information by typing, but now it wants to read your thoughts. Put your thoughts down on paper. You know, just the thoughts that you're willing to share. Look, Facebook has already crossed lines of willing and not willing. If you have Facebook on and you don't have a VPN or something like that, they can access other things that you're Googling, looking into, all gathered on a database. These are admitted facts. You can find it very simply in the description section on Facebook, who tells you that their entire uh, idea is to gather information on you and you cannot opt out. There is no opting out. If you wanna use the program, you have to accept to those terms and limitations. Billions of people are on this platform and there Regina Duncan is telling you that they're attempting to gather your thoughts. But listen, it gets even more terrifying the next clip I'm going to show you is probably the most frightening of them all, but a former executive at Facebook 
went on to expose this. Take a listen. I feel tremendous guilt. Um, I, think we, I think we all knew in the back of our minds, even though we feigned this whole line of like, there probably aren't any really bad unintended consequences. I think in the back, deep, deep recesses of our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. Ripping apart the fabric of society? Social media is doing that? Facebook in doing that? That is what this executive, former executive, was telling everyone. He's guilty because he created brainwashing techniques, brain manipulation techniques via Facebook. He's scared to death. Scared to death about some of the repercussions. But he says a little more. In this next clip that you're going to hear, he talks about the dopamine dump, how Facebook is an addiction. Take a listen. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth. And it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. So we are in a really bad state of affairs right now, in my opinion. It is, it is eroding the core foundations of how people behave. Dopamine. It's kind of like if you're addicted to, I don't know, drug of some sort. Say you're addicted to prescription drugs, but I won't tell you till after the hazard. Say you started smoking cigarettes, nicotine addiction. Well, never mind that you're addicted. We'll tell you years later of the addiction properties. That's exactly what he's saying. It has a dopamine tick. Just one more click, one more like, one more this, one more, one more. That's what he's talking about. And his solution? Well, take a listen. Um, and I don't have a good solution. You know, my solution is I just don't use these tools anymore. I haven't for years. It's created huge tension with my friends, huge tensions in my social circles. Um, if you look at like, you know, my Facebook feed, I probably haven't, I've posted maybe two times in seven years. Three times, five times, it's like just, it's less than 10. Um, and it's weird, I guess I kind of just innately didn't want to get programmed. And so I just turned, tuned it out, but I didn't confront it. And now to see what's happening, it's really, it really, it really bums me out. His solution, don't use it. And why doesn't he use it? Well, that's the even bigger one. Because it programs you. Did you catch that? Programs you. It's programming your thoughts, your ideas, the way you feel, who you are, a program. So he doesn't use it. In fact, he doesn't even let his kids use it. That is the kind of stuff that we are dealing with. But he's not the only one who warned. How about Sean Parker? He also warned. He's a, he's a former uh, investor, big time investor of Facebook. Check out this report titled, Facebook was designed to be addictive. He goes on to state that Mark Zuckerberg knowingly created a monster with addictive social media. Why is this important? Well, let me start with this. Facebook has 1 billion users, 1 billion. The, of those 1 billion users, more than 100 million use it on every single phone. Not only that, but we spend an average of 50 minutes every day on Facebook alone. That's huge. Now you might ask, why do I use it? Well, I don't share personal information on there. My information is out in the open because of the YouTube channel and things that I do, but I use it strictly for business. I encourage you, if you're going to use it, use it for that and <laughs> get a VPN. You guys know who I recommend for that, but make sure you are not sharing the personal data that you need. Get off of it if you can, unless you need it to reach people, to show them the truth of what's really going on, which we can do that also. But 50 minutes a day is what the average person is using on this website. A website 
that you're giving power to someone like Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, a man who willingly pits one woman's good looks over another. A man who called you a dumb effer. A man who wears symbolism and, and associates himself with satanic symbols. That's who you're giving precedence to on Facebook. Not only that, but his executives don't even use the program. There has to be a reason behind it. So what is the motive? What is the agenda? Well, brainwashing, programming. Don't think they do it? Check out this report or don't think the government allows it? Check out this report from the Smithsonian.com titled The True Story of Brainwashing and How It Has Shaped America. How does a man who makes billions of dollars like Mark Zuckerberg involve himself with gathering people's data? Well, there's an agenda. He's sharing that information with someone. And you can guarantee those fusion centers here in America, the China dictator, which he's admitted to, admitted to giving information to, and multiple others. Anyhow, I'd love to get your thoughts and comments on this. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hmm. I have Robert doing some research on the VPNs so that we can get another format to broadcast, and I'm getting rid of Facebook. You won't be seeing me. Maybe after the first of the year, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe maybe 30 days from now. It's going to take time to, to get what I need, the information I need to get off that, to make a transition uh, from that because I don't want any part of that. And um, it's not necessary. I lived some 60 years without it. <laughs> I can live without Facebook or any of those other uh, platforms. Uh, but if you notice how it is, it has separated communities, it has separated people, you know. Uh, when you get two people going out to dinner and they can't sit and talk, they're on their phones, there's something wrong with that. When you can't take the time to just talk to your significant wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever it may be, and be on your phones, there's something wrong with that. That's, there's a programming there of, of getting you away from personal interaction with people. And it works in our own families. It, and we don't realize it. <laughs> we really don't realize it. But, but that's what's happening. And it's programming us. So I'm going to stop there because I have a few more things I want to say about the New World Order. Uh, let me just say this about the New World Order. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity. What did we hear Sunday? about all the churches and the Pope, unity. You're going to hear that, more, that word more and more and more and more. You're going to hear it from federal governments. You're going to hear it from countries. You're going to hear it from nations. They want to get together in unity. Um, China just came out with a suggestion for a one-world money system. It was rejected by Europe and, and, and America. But the plans are already there. It's already being, being implemented. They, that's their goal. That's where the world is heading. Why do you think, let me just say this one other thing. One of the things about um, a one world government or one world order, the, the one thing that they need the most, okay, is no borders. Why do you think in America there's such a fight for that wall? Because that's a border. And in order to implement this one world system, this one world globalization, okay, they take down all the borders. There's no more borders. So you're, you're free to go anywhere or travel anywhere. You can do whatever you want to do. It's to break down the American people in their thinking about seg segregating countries and nations. They want it all to come together. That's why these Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, um, Maxine Waters are screaming at the top of their lungs to impeach Trump because they say, and there was even someone, I don't remember who it was, that came out in the news and said that Trump is destroying the globalization agenda. And he kind of is. See, because one of the enemies to that is Christians. 
one of the, because Christians want to do what's right and lawful, and these people are, are filled with lawlessness. You see what they're doing. You see Antifa, okay? And if, if I had my way and I was a government official, anyone who was protesting in my, my jurisdiction that had covered their face and have hoods on would be arrested. That's a terrorist. That's not a protester. If you're, you can go and protest under the Constitution, but it says the right to protest peacefully. That's your right under the Constitution, to protest peacefully. When you come with a mask on, you have a, another agenda that you don't want to be identified so, because you're going to be doing something that's probably illegal or against the law. And why don't we attack those things? We're not, because that's all part of it. I read it to you about riots and revolutions, and that's what they want to cause, an, an instability in the, in the, in the uh, government or in the state or in the community so that people are filled with fear. And if people are filled with fear, they're going to look for someone to protect them. And then the government's going to come and step in and say, here I am, I will protect you. We're going to move in the direction and this is what we're going to do to do that. Um, let me just put up one more slide. I got, one, I, got, I got a PowerPoint there. Don't I have a PowerPoint there? I don't have the PowerPoint. Is it on the, is it on the, uh, the desktop? I might have not loaded it. It should be there. Can you load that in for a minute? Let's give me... A few moments. I want to show you this this one here. I'll go through it real quickly. I'll I, I'll try to get really done by eight thirty. Yes, that's it. This is from the World Economic Forum. Okay, what will be the global currency of the future? It's coming. It's coming. Next slide. China calls for the new glo global currency. Okay, but the proposal was rejected uh, by America and the European Union. They brushed off the idea. But they're still thinking about it. Next one. A global currency is coming whether you like it or not. It's coming. You can deny it all you want to, say it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. Next slide. Look at this. This is their goal. Okay? Promote peaceful and inclusive societies. Inclusive societies. What does that mean? The homosexual, the lesbian, the transgenders, all of the people that are not like you, you're just going to have to suck it up and you're going to have to accept them. A promote a peaceful and inclusive society for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and to build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Hmm. Look at this. By 2030, provide legal identity for all, including birth registration. By 2030. You say 2030, that's a long way off. That's only 12 years away. Sh soon to be 11. So 11 years from now, I'll be 63, uh, 73. I'm gonna, I've lived my life, so if they want to kill me, let them kill me. I'm not changing. Next slide. Historic movement, UN News, for people on the move as UN agrees to first ever global compact on migration. They're going to pass laws that countries cannot refuse immigration. They're all happy, but look what it's done to Greece. Look what immigration has done to Germany. The, Germany's almost ruined. There's more Muslims taking over Germany now. They say we're losing our identity. Next slide. Mandatory vaccinations, the international landscape. 
Some of you have often really just experienced some of that. Okay? Leisha was told if you, if you don't take the vaccination of the, the flu shot, you've got to wear a mask. So they're forcing you into compliance. They're forcing you. They're not giving you a choice anymore. They're forcing you into compliance, either or, or you have to do this. That's egg free, but they put something else in it. Right. There are other things that are in these flu sh in these vaccinations that are bad, and they're not telling you. Okay, and that's another way that they're, they're doing things. Okay. Next slide. Global crackdown on parents who refuse vaccinations for their kids has begun. Countries like Italy and Australia are tired of measles outbreaks, so they're moving to fine anti-vaccine parents. If you don't get your child vaccined, you're going to be fined. Sounds good. But do you see the control is starting to take over? Slowly, more and more control. Next slide, please. Did you know about this, Pastor Tom? This is the United Nations Office for Disarmament Affairs. Okay. The department concerns every country and all weapons, from hand grenades to hand hydrogen bombs. My new agenda focuses on disarmament to save humanity, disarmament that saves lives, and disarmament for future Generations. That's May 24th, 2018. Who wants to take away your guns in America? The Democrats. Why? Because they're socialists. They're the ones that are pushing for this one world government. They're the ones that are pushing for all of these things. And, and no borders. The agenda is there, socialism. They want socialism, free education. Of course, there's no such thing as free education. They just pass the buck to the next generation because it goes through the taxes. It's going to go to the deficit, and the next generation has to pay that deficit because you're not going to have teachers that don't get paid. You're not going to have colleges that don't run without money. Next slide, please. Here's a history of what happens after governments have disarmed the citizens. In 1911, Turkey disarmed its citizens between 1915 and 1917. They murdered 1.5 million Armenians. 1929, Russia disarmed its citizens, and between 1929 and 1953, they murdered 20 million Russians. In 1935, China disarmed its citizens between 48 and 52. They murdered 20 million Chinese. In 1938, Germany disarmed its citizens between 1939 and 1945. They murdered 16 million Jews. In 1956, Cambodia disarmed its citizens between 75 and 77. They murdered 1 million educated people. 64, Guatemala disarmed its citizens between 64 and 81. They murdered 100,000 Mayan Indians. In 1970, Uganda disarmed its citizens between 71 and 79. They murdered 300,000 Christians. And every time there's a school shooting, and every time they blame the guns. It's not the guns, it's the person. Let me ask you this. When, it, when the person's convicted, who goes to jail, the gun or the person? <laughs> the person. It's not the gun. I can, take, I can take my gun. I don't have it with me tonight. But I have a gun. If I was to take it and place it on this platform, fully loaded, with one in the chamber, that gun will never kill anyone. It's people that touch that gun, that mishandle the gun, that don't know safety about handling a gun, or they intend to use it for bad purposes, is what injures people. It's not, it's not law-abiding citizens. Why take the rights away from law-abiding citizens? Because there's an agenda, and the agenda is socialistic government, which eventually will evolve into one world government. Next slide, I think it's the last one. 
Well, next one. To disarm the people, this was George Mason, to disarm the people is the best and most effectual way to enslave them. Next one. Thomas Jefferson. No free man shall ever be debarred the use of arms. No, it's a constitutional right. That's why they want to amend the Constitution. That's why they want to change the Constitution. Because they have an agenda. Next one, please. Adolf Hitler once said, to conquer a nation, you must first disarm its citizens. And that philosophy, and they call Trump a Nazi, they call Trump Hitler, they call him, they're the ones. The very ones that they say he is, is what they are. They're the ones that want to disarm. They're the ones that want to go for one world government. They're the ones that want to do all these things. But we're living in the last days. We are living in the book of Revelation. People say, well, I want, what's the future? What's going to be the future? What? Read Revelation. It tells you about the churches, those six churches that are going to be, uh, seven churches that are going to be in the last days. Read about it. Read the different characteristics of those churches. We are in the Laodicean church. Ready for chapter 4. When the rapture comes, no more church mentioned after chapter 4. God begins to deal with the Jews. Amen? Did you learn something tonight? Amen. I'm not going to tell you to get off Facebook. That's not my position to do that. But I know one person that's getting off of it, and that's me. That's two people. There's three. And she never was on it. Smart person. Okay. But that's how addicted people are to it. But that's how addicted people are to it. They can't let it go. You're just, it, people that are so addicted to Facebook is just like a person addicted to drugs. They got to be on that Facebook. They got to be on that page. They got to be on that internet. They got to, it's, a, it's an addiction. And it's been programmed into you to be there to share more information, more information. Oh, yeah, we do it, you know, now we show our pictures and all that stuff. Yeah, they're getting, they're getting that information for face recognition. They're getting all of that, and we're giving it to them. They're not coming in with a gun and, and demanding it. We're just handing it over to them. So um, get ready, because things are going to get interesting for 2019. Amen? Father, we pray that you keep us. Lord, we say, come, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord. Lord, rapture your church before all of these things. You, I know you have the perfect timing, the exact day, the exact hour it's going to happen. You know, Father, it's in your, it's in your, your plan. But help us, Lord, to stay faithful to you. When the churches are going crazy, they're joining the Pope, the one world religion, they're giving up their, their sovereignty, they're handing it over to the Pope. They're even calling the Pope their Pope for the sake of unity. God, help us. Lord, you said it's going to take everything to stand in our faith, and if we will not stand by faith, we will not stand at all. God, help us to make that stand. Be with us as we go our separate ways today till we meet again on Sunday morning. Be with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, about tomorrow, we're going to have to cancel. Is everything okay? Uh, no, actually, no. It's Kevin. I've had lice. Oh, my goodness. Not just...